in the name of Jesus. God is helping us and he's raising us to be spiritual men. And you may have learned here, and let me repeat again, that a spiritual man is more than a Christian. A spiritual man is more than a follower of a man of God or a religion. Please lend me your attention. A spiritual man, you are spiritual to the degree to which you, number one, you submit to the supremacy of the word of God. You submit to the supremacy of the word of God. True spirituality is not just measured by spiritual activities. True spirituality is not just measured by your loyalty to a man of God or even a church, as important as that is. Are we together? You are a spiritual man to the degree to which, number one, you have chosen as an act of your will to submit to the word of God, the supremacy of the word of God. You have exalted the word of God above culture. You have exalted the word of God above all kinds of sociological sentiments. When the word of God becomes the modus operandi of your life, you are a spiritual man. There are many people who talk spirituality, but they are not spiritual men, they are not spiritual women. So let me repeat myself again that you are a spiritual man to the degree to which you have chosen to submit to the word of God. Number two, you are a spiritual man to the degree to which you have chosen to submit to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Get my teachings on the Holy Spirit. There's still another series on its way coming. Are we together? The Holy Spirit is beyond your friend. The Holy Spirit is beyond the wind, oils, beyond the dove. The Holy Spirit is beyond an influence. The Holy Spirit is God, the Spirit of the living God, sent to the believer. The primary advantage the believer has in this life is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Even what you call scripture came from him. Holy men wrote as they were inspired. They did not just guess what they wrote. It was the Holy Spirit. So if you do not submit to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you cannot be spiritual. You can be 10 years in church. Please look at me. You can be an elder in church. You can be a deacon. You can be a pastor. But you are not spiritual just because you've been around the things of God. True spirituality, I repeat, is measured by the degree of your submission to the word of God and number two your submission to the leadership the ministry of the Holy Spirit that means that in building men to be spiritual because according to scripture there are three kinds of men the Bible talks about the natural man that's the unregenerate man one who has not even encountered Jesus Christ through the new birth experience. And then number two, the Bible talks about the carnal man, the one who is saved, but not transformed, not empowered. You have to learn this. So the natural man is the one who is not saved at all, has not confessed Jesus as his Lord and Savior. The carnal man is one who has received Jesus. Are we together now? but has not submitted to the ministry of the word of God and has not submitted to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's sensual. His life is governed by the impulses of the senses and of the flesh. Number three, the spiritual man. The difference between the spiritual man and the natural man is that the spiritual man has decided to partner with the word of God to partner with the Holy Spirit even for his transformation. And I have taught you here in this house that the greatest need of every unbeliever in order of divine priority is salvation. There is nothing you can give to an unbeliever that satisfies that unbeliever truly from an eternal perspective higher than salvation. That means if you see an unbeliever, um, he may be a neighbor, he may be a friend, he may be a husband, a wife, he may be your child, the highest need from an eternal perspective of an unbeliever is salvation. Then for the new believer, the greatest need of the believer that has been saved is transformation. 
do not forget this transformation the process that makes you become like Christ in experience and that is through the ministry of the word that is through the ministry of the spirit principally alongside of course other spiritual principles like prayer corporate fellowship fasting etc then the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment because when you are transformed and you are not empowered you will propose a lot of spiritual things that you do not have the strength and the grace to prove hallelujah so you will tell people Jesus heals Jesus delivers and yet there'll be demons flying all around you yourself your church your congregation your family and you can't do anything about it so empowerment is very important Jesus took the people through a transformative process by the word and yet he told them tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high hallelujah and then of course I did tell you that the greatest need of a transformed believer is character and then chiefest among the character traits that is needed is humility because we see this in the life of Jesus hallelujah so that you don't keep coming to church and cannot measure your growth you should be able to know what is happening to you many believers cannot exactly pinpoint what is happening to them imagine with me a student who has been in school maybe a college or university two three years and cannot tell what is happening you should be able to tell okay you you are now in the college of medicine you're four years down the line you should you should be able to prove that you are learning you are not yet a doctor certified but at least we should see that you have made progress is that true so if you've been to church for a while and there is no difference between the former you and the now you it is either the preacher is wasting your time respectfully speaking or you are wasting your own time by being in the presence of God but not being open to receive listen the church the house of God is also a school the house of God is also a school it's a training ground where God builds people the church is not the place of manifestation the church is the place of training now you are trained like you are receiving tonight then you can now be released with knowledge and grace knowledge and grace because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge you can now go out and be ambassadors whether in the marketplace in ministry whatever it is the church is a school is a place of training and the same way a student does not pay attention in school there are people in the house of God who also do not pay attention the same principles that make a student excel in class are the same principles that make a, so a, a, a student excel in church that name congregant or members sometimes can be very deceptive because it makes people very casual I am a member I am a uh, but when you see yourself as a student or the Bible calls them a disciple a disciple is one who submits himself to doctrine to learning are we together <laughs> 